Hello. In this video, we are going to be using the rotational constant B for hydrogen to determine indirectly the bond length of hydrogen. Recall that the energy of a rigid rotor level J can be written as the rotational constant B times J times J plus one. This formula is equivalent to the formula where we have h bar squared divided by 2i, where i is the moment of inertia of the molecule, times j times j plus 1. So we can see that there is an equivalence between the rotational constant b and this expression h bar squared divided by 2i. Now we can rewrite the definition of the moment of inertia in terms of mu, which is the reduced mass, times r squared, where r is the bond length. So we can see that we can use the rotational constant b if we know the uh, moment of inertia, if we know the mass of the molecule, to determine the bond length r. So the first thing we need to determine for our molecule, which is going to be H2, is to find the reduced mass. In the case of a homonuclear diatomic, the reduced mass is simply equal to the mass of one of the atoms divided by two. So the mass of hydrogen is equal to 1.0078 atomic mass units. Therefore, the reduced mass is one half of this, which is equal to 0 0.5039 atomic mass units. Next, we want to convert from atomic mass units to kilograms. So the conversion is that one atomic mass unit is equal to 1.6605 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms is equal to one atomic mass unit. Multiplying through, we determine that the reduced mass of the H2 molecule is equal to 8.36726 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. The rotational constant B for H2 is equal to 60.8 inverse centimeters. So recall that we can convert from wave numbers, which is the form of the rotational constant B here, to a frequency by multiplying by the speed of light. So we have that 60.8 inverse centimeters. And now we multiply by the speed of light in the form of centimeters per second. So we have 2.9979 times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second. And we're using the version in centimeters per second because the um, rotational constant is in the form of inverse centimeters. So this gives us a value of 1.8227 times 10 to the 12th inverse seconds. So this gives us a frequency term. Now to convert from frequency to an energy term, recall that energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. So we can multiply 1.8227 times 10 to the 12th inverse seconds by Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And we can convert this particular constant to the form of an energy, and that gives us a value of 1.20774 times 10 to the minus 21 joules.
Next, we set the energy value of the rotational constant B, 1.20774 times 10 to the minus 21 joules, and we set it equivalent to h bar squared divided by 2i. So we can rearrange this expression to solve for the moment of inertia i. First, we take h bar squared, which is 1.0546 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And that has to be squared. And we divide it by 2 times this particular energy in joules, which is 2.41547 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. Further simplifying this expression, we get 1.11208 times 10 to the minus 68 joules squared second squared divided by our 2.41547 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. And then that gives us that the moment of inertia of our molecule is determined to be 4.60397 times 10 to the minus 48. And we have the interesting set of units of joules second squared. To convert this to more normal units, recall that one joule is equal to one kilogram meter squared per second squared. And if we insert that into this expression, we get that the moment of inertia is equal to 4.60397 times 10 to the minus 48 kilogram meters squared. Recall that the moment of inertia is equal to mu, the reduced mass, times r squared. So solving for r squared, we get that r squared is equal to the moment of inertia i divided by mu. Now we know the moment of inertia, we determine that to be 4.60397 times 10 to the minus 48 kilogram meters squared. We also have already previously determined that the reduced mass is 8.36726 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. Solving through for the expression, we get that r squared is equal to 5.5023 times 10 to the minus 21 meters squared, which gives us that r is equal to 0 0.742 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Using a convenient conversion, recall that 10 to the minus 10 meters is one angstrom. So this gives us that the hydrogen-hydrogen bond length in H2 is equal to 0 0.742 angstroms. All right, thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.